Amber and I'm the secretary of the board at Betsy Tasty Society and the, it's October 1st today and we are celebrating October with a Betsy Tasty read aloud. October also is um, Reading Disability and Dyslexia Awareness Month and um, I as a child struggled with reading. Um, my dad is dyslexic, my brother was had reading disability and my daughter has reading disability. She's dyslexic and she has ADHD. Um, so it was kind of like an idea that just kind of sprung from my own personal struggle with reading. So this month we are celebrating people with reading disabilities and dyslexia um, and reading aloud the Betsy Tacy book. Um, so we have different people from either the Betsy Tacy Society or other people who have been involved over the years with Betsy Tacy and then also some local Deep Valley um, or Mankato area people that are reading the books for us. Um, we'll have some live concerts involved as well this month um, that'll come out on Facebook and you'll be able to click on the YouTube link when those go live every couple days throughout the month. And um, I should just share that when I was younger and I struggled with reading, what really got me into these books was my grandma um, grew up in Mankato and so she knew about the Mott Hart Loveless Betsy Tacy series. And I moved here from Hawaii after being all over the world and I was very sad. And I moved down the street on Lewis Street and my grandma would read the books to me. And then as I got older and was able to start reading, I read them myself. But she'd take me to the bench across the street and um, that's kind of how I started to get out of my struggles with reading as I would read very slowly and I still read very, very slowly. But um, these are the books that really got me interested in reading, is reading about Betsy and her adventures. I'm Jennifer Davis Kay and I'm sitting here in my home in Arlington, Massachusetts by my big front window, which I love because I can look out and see my dear friend, Annie Holmesa, who lives right across the street. And it makes me think of my favorite girl in my favorite book in the whole world, Betsy Ray, who is five years old when we meet her and looking out the window at the new family moving in and really, really hoping that it's going to include a girl her age who will be her special friend. I moved into this house more than 20 years ago and I had no idea that such a wonderful friend would be right across the street. And it has been absolutely lovely to have such a good friend so close by. I'm going to read you the very first chapter of the very first Betsy Tacy book. Um, but first I wanted to show you something kind of fun. That is Betsy. A little bit younger, I think, than when we first meet her in the book. Younger than five, but very close to that age. And uh, that she in real life is Maud Hart Lovelace, the woman who wrote the Betsy Tacy books. And of course, there is a Tacy. I'm not showing you a picture. I'm showing you my Tacy clothespin doll. See her beautiful long red ringlets? A friend gave me this doll because she knew how much I love Tacy since we both have curly red hair. The Betsy Tacy books are my favorite books in the entire world. I've been reading them and reading them since I was a little girl, just about Betsy's age, as soon as I could read for myself. And I'm very happy to start us off with the first book in the whole series of Betsy Tacy. Not to give anything away, the chapter one is called Betsy Meets Tacy. You can probably guess what's going to happen. It was difficult, later, to think of a time when Betsy and Tacy had not been friends. Hill Street came to regard them almost as one person. Betsy's brown braids went with Tacy's red curls, Betsy's plump legs with Tacy's spindly ones, to school and from school, uphill and down, on errands and in play so that when Tacy had the mumps and Betsy was obliged to make her journeys alone, saucy boys teased her. Where's the cheese, apple pie? Where's your mush, milk? As though she didn't feel lonesome enough already. And Hill Street knew when Sunday came, even without listening to the rolling bells, for Betsy Ray and Tacy Kelly, whose parents attended different churches, 
set off down Hill Street separately, looking uncomfortable and strange. But on this March afternoon, a month before Betsy's fifth birthday, they did not know each other. They had not even seen each other, unless Betsy had glimpsed Tacy without knowing her for Tacy, among the children of assorted sizes, moving into the house across the street. Betsy had been kept in because of bad weather, and all day she had sat with her nose pasted to the pane. It was exciting beyond words to have a family with children moving into that house. Hill Street was rightfully named. It ran straight up into a green hill and stopped. The name of the town was Deep Valley, and a town named Deep Valley naturally had plenty of hills. Betsy's house, a small yellow cottage, was the last house on her side of Hill Street, and the rambling White House opposite was the last house on that side. So, of course, it was very important. And it had been empty ever since Betsy could remember. I hope whoever moves in will have children, Betsy's mother had said. Well, for Pete's sake, said Betsy's father. Hill Street is so full of children now that old Mag has to watch out where she puts her feet down. Old Mag is his horse. I know, said Betsy's mother. There are plenty of children for Julia. Julia was Betsy's sister, eight years old. And there are dozens of babies, but there isn't one little girl just Betsy's age. And that's what I'm hoping will come to the house across the street. That was what Betsy hoped too. And that was what she had been watching for all day as she sat at the dining room window. She was certain there must be such a little girl. There were girls of almost every size and boys to match, milling about the moving dray and in and out of the house. But she wasn't sure. She hadn't absolutely seen one. She had watched all day and now the dining room was getting dark. Julia had stopped practicing her music lesson, and Mrs. Ray had lighted the lamp in the kitchen. The March snow lay cold and dirty outside the window, but the wind had died down, and the western sky behind the house opposite was stained with red. The furniture had all been carried in, and the dray was gone. A light was shining in the house. Suddenly, the front door opened and a little girl ran out. She wore a hood beneath which long red ringlets spattered out above her coat. Her legs in their long black stockings were thin. It was Tacy, although Betsy did not know it. She ran first to the hitching block and bounced there on her toes a minute, looking up at the sky and all around. Then she ran up to the road to the point where it ended on the hill. Some long gone person had placed a bench there. It commanded the view down Hill Street. The little girl climbed up on this bench and looked intently into the dusk. I know just how she feels, thought Betsy with a throb. This is her new home. She wants to see what it's like. She ran to her mother. Mama, she cried, there's the little girl my age. Please let me go out just a minute, please. Mrs. Ray was moved by the entreaty. She looked out at the colored sky. It does seem to be clearing up, she said, but you could only stay a minute. Do you want to go to the bother of putting on your things? Oh, yes, yes overshoes and mittens and everything. Yes, really! Betsy flew to the closet, but she could not find her pussy hood. The mittens were twisted on the string inside her coat. Mama, help me, please. She'll be gone. Help her, Julia, called Betsy's mother. And Julia helped. And at last, the pussy hood was tied and the coat buttoned and the overshoes buckled and the mittens pulled on. Outside, the air was fresh and cold. The street lamp had been lighted. It was exciting just to be out at this hour, even without the prospect of meeting the new little girl. But the new little girl stood still on the bench, looking down the street. Betsy ran toward her. She ran on the sidewalk as far as it went. Then she took to the frozen, ruddy road, and she had almost reached the bench when the little girl saw her. Hello, called Betsy. What's your name? The other child 
made no answer. She jumped off the bench. Don't go, cried Betsy. I I'm coming. But the other child, without a word, began to run. She brushed past Betsy on her headlong flight down the hill. She ran like a frightened rabbit, and Betsy ran in pursuit. Wait, wait, Betsy panted as she ran. But the new child would not stop. On fleet, black-stockinged legs, she ran faster than Betsy could follow. Wait, wait, pleaded Betsy. But the child did not turn her head. She gained her own lawn and floundered through the snow to her house. The entrance to her house was through a storm shed. She ran into this and banged the door. The door had a pane of glass in the front. And through that pane, she stared fearfully at Betsy. Betsy stood still, winking back tears, a mitten finger in her mouth. At last she turned and trudged slowly back through the snowy dark to her house. She had almost reached her porch when the door of the storm shed opened. The new little girl stuck out her head. Tacy, she shouted. You needn't call names, Betsy shouted back. Tacy was shouting her own name, really, but it was such an odd name Betsy didn't understand. She trudged on into the house. The lamp hanging over the dining room table was lighted now. A delicious smell of fried potatoes floated from the kitchen. Well, her mother called out cheerfully, did you get acquainted? What's her name? asked Julia. I don't know. I don't like her. I'm mad at her, said Betsy. It was all she could do not to cry. That was as near as Betsy and Tacy ever came to a quarrel. And of course it didn't count, for they weren't friends yet. They began to be friends next month in April at Betsy's birthday party. And here we have Tacy running away from Betsy. Tacy is very shy. She has no idea that she's just met the best friend she's ever going to have in her whole life. Okay, those words make me cry. I love this book so much, and I hope you like this chapter. <laughs> Are you girls laughing at all of Betsy's stories? Yeah. Which one are you laughing at? The one where she tried to fly. <laughs> What about when they make the pudding? Everything <laughs> pudding. <laughs> that must have tasted terrible. Yeah. Have you ever tried to make everything pudding at your own house? Technically. No. Mm, kind of. We made the birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't everything pudding. We didn't find. We didn't. We followed the instructions to the T. Well, it didn't turn out good. <laughs> it didn't turn out good? At least it tasted good. Yeah. One time me and my friend did it, and it turned out hard. <laughs> and then the cats got into it. <laughs> so today we're standing here with what we call the neighborhood Betsy Tacy of today. <laughs> this is Isabella. <laughs> this is Isabella <laughs> and Maria, daughters of board member... Amber, and board member Shandy. So these girls live down the road from each other, and both girls have had Betsy Tacy books read to them since they were very little, and they are fortunate. 7,000 7, times. <laughs> They're very fortunate, both of them, to be able to live near these houses and be able to dress up in costume and go to all the events and join the BTT club and get pen pals. <laughs> So this month we are doing a Betsy Tacy read aloud, but also you can purchase um, Betsy Tacy read aloud by Sutton Foster. Um, so if you struggle with reading or if you have little ones that would like to listen to the Betsy Tacy books, or if you're driving, um, you can definitely purchase this online. Option. It is a great option. Mm -hmm. Are you our salesperson? <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs>